Um, greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares, plus a few special surprises in the house. We've got special guests Mike Portnoy, Jim Bocci, and Martin Popoff. And joining us, as always, Butch Jones, Lynn Versace, Nick Franco's back after a couple week break. We've got Sydney Taylor, we've got Ryan Scow, Chris Allo, and Steve Keeler. So tonight, as promised, we are going to be talking about our favorite albums from 1977. I think everybody, by a show of hands, this was a tough one, correct? I mean, so Very. many great, great albums from Very. 1977. Whittling it down to just three was kind of like torture. Um, but I'm curious to see what everybody has come up with. So uh, we're going to start... We're going to start down at the bottom. Uh, we have a couple folks that might have to cut out early today, right? So just remind me, that might be Steve and it might about be Jim, an, correct? I got about an hour. I got about an hour. I'm good. Right. You good? Okay. I'm good. Cool. All right. So, Steve, I'm going to have you go first. You know, we're going to go. This is how we're going to go here. Uh, geez. Wow. Oh, so many people. We're going to go Steve. I'm going to, I'm going to do a weird cut across and what I'm going to go Steve, <laughs> Ryan, Nick, Lynn, Butch, Sydney, Mike, Jim, Chris, and then Martin, and then myself. Okay, so I hope I can remember all that. Hey, good luck remembering. That makes me yeah, know, right? <laughs> gonna be well, the way I'm looking at it, it's kind of a weird, a weird. Oh, I don't want to write it down, Pete. <laughs> I'm after Nick. Take a list. <laughs> so, all right, Steve Keeler, what do you got? What are your three choices for 1970? Take it off. Uh, I'm going to cheat. I'm doing a tie for third. Then I'm going to do Judas Priest, sin after sin, or sinner. Diamonds and Rust, Starbreaker, Dissident Aggressor, some of my favorite tracks off that album. And I make, I, how do I not have ACDC, Let There Be Rock, Go Down, Let There Be Rock, Bad Boy Boogie, Problem Child, Whole Lot of Rosie. And heading to number three, although that was number three, oh, that was three and four. <laughs> hey, da, 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 tied. So going to number two, uh, not really in any order these are, but uh, Rush, Farewell to Kings. 37 Minutes of Pure Bliss. It's a short album, I think, but uh, that's a great album. And ends up with Cygnus X1, which, of course, transfers into Hemispheres. And uh, a lot of people probably aren't going to see me picking this for number one. I mean, there's a ton of other albums I listen to. I think back to what I listened to back then, and some of these other albums I don't have in the top three, I wore out on my 8-track and my vinyl. But uh, I'm going with Pink Floyd Animals for number one. I think it's an album that people will listen to 100 years from now when some of these other bands may be forgotten. I, that Pink Floyd's album, it's a musical, musical take, of course, on George Orwell novels, like 84, echoes a lot of the current craziness that we're living in in this planet yep. currently with the whole storyline. And I just got to, I watched a Pink Floyd tribute last week and I've been really into Pink Floyd after seeing them. Sometimes when you see a band and you just kind of, really back and uh so i'm gonna win the animals for number one for 77s the year that elvis nice. died the king of rock and roll left us too but martin usually does this part so i didn't know if martin was I'm ready i'm ready with that when you guys want it <laughs> i should have asked yeah. you first so before well, we do i hear ryan, that before we go to ryan martin give us a, a 77 recap Okay, so 1977, we've got the Oakland Raiders uh, winning their first Super Bowl ever over Minnesota Vikings. We've got the Yankees winning over the L.A. Dodgers. Portland Trailblazers won the NBA. Um, we had the New York City blackout, 25 hours, yeah. starting July 13th. Uh, the Atari 2600 home video game. Uh, Elvis dies. We also lose Bing Crosby, Charlie Chaplin, Groucho Marx, wow. uh, Freddie Prince <sighs> from the great Chico and the Man. Um, Star Wars premieres, Saturday Night Fever, Annie Hall, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, uh, Roots, the big series, Best Picture wins is Rocky, um, Album of the Year, I guess this was a Grammy, Songs in the Key of Life, Stevie Wonder, uh, NASA has their space shuttle test flight, and uh, Born in 1977, Donald Trump Jr. and Kanye West. Wow. And it was the summer of Sam. That was the, the was summer of, uh, yeah. was the son of Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Was Sam. Summer of Sam. And, and, and the big big Yankees year too with the Reg, the classic Reggie Jackson uh, three home runs in the World Series yeah. classic Yankee team that year. That and Led Zeppelin played their last U.S. concert in Oakland, Ooh, California. Yeah. 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 And the New York Mets did nothing that year, so we can forget. <laughs> um, yeah, so by a show of hands, how many people went to see Star Wars more than five times that summer? 
I was, no, I was born. I was later. twice. I don't think more than five, but I probably Very saw well. it at least five. I, 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 Mr. Popoff. Mm -hmm. You've you've missed a, a very important sport uh -oh. in your cap there. So who Thank won the Bush. Stanley Cup in 1977? Oh man, Montreal. Montreal? Yeah, Montreal. Okay, <laughs> like Martin, you're a Canadian, right? <laughs> a Canadian guy. Yeah, yeah, I know. I left that one out. <laughs> he was going to lead with that. I, I heard it was an American that. show, you know. <laughs> I saw I saw Kiss for the first time in '77, Madison oh. Square Garden. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Very cool. I crapped myself a lot in '77. <laughs> yeah, what are you like one? I was like, I, I went to my first show in '77. Like Twenty-five. So 25, I don't know. All right, Sydney. It was something crazy. I wasn't even a like a thought. Like my dad wasn't even ten yet. So there you go. <laughs> nice. I didn't see Kiss in '77, but I did go to my first concert in '77, May twelfth, nineteen seventy-seven. I saw the Bay City Rollers. Wow. Yes. Really, had a really cool stage show. That's a cool song. 77 was one of my first national Doesn't actual love meet, that song. Meet, meatloaf here at, at, at right next door at the college. A young kid walked over and who was this band? Never heard of them. And of course, a few weeks later, they broke in to being big with the bat of the hell album. Yeah. 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 I got a 77. That was a huge year for me. So first concert ever. Kiss. In February, uh, the, the, the first time at the garden, the original, yeah. the, this is the uh, nice. yeah, Coliseum, it's oh, the original Coliseum. tour book that I, I've wow. moved over 10 times. And this has been with me since 1977 with the iron on t-shirt cool. iron on still intact. Wow. Awesome. Nice. Then nice. at the end of the year, I saw them again and I have this too. Yeah, that was the one I was at. And then for Christmas, I got my first guitar. Which is nice. a Color Belly Explorer <laughs> copy. Um, and that's the actual one? That's the actual guitar. Wow, that's killer. Yeah, and, yeah. and Butch, this will be of a note to you. I know that you know that the guitar in the back of Women and Children First is an Ibanez lawsuit, Ibanez Destroyer. Yep. Made in the same factory. So essentially a lawsuit Ibanez. Oh, wow. It's really good. I got it restored. It doesn't look this perfect the whole time. I got it restored. <laughs> 12 years ago, because I painted it white in the 80s. Of course. But I got it back to the original. So it was a big, big, big year for me. So awesome. That's my 1977. I got one more note before you move on to somebody else. It was also the same year of the tragic Leonard Skinner plane, plane crash. Yeah. 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 Uh. And that's also one of my honorable, that was my one of my honorable mentions, of course, of Street Survivors. Yeah, how many days after Street Light? Was it like three days after the album came out that happened? Like two it days? Right it was like immediately yeah. 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 Right after the album. It was really close. Tragic. And of course, the album came out with the flames behind it, and then they yeah. pulled that for yeah. a while. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. That cover. I got it. I got it. I got it. That sucks. I, I, I didn't bring any props. So I, there we go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Steve Gaines. Yeah, man. All right. So we're moving down the coast here. So Ryan Scow, you're up. All right, so uh, yeah, I, I also picked a huge pile of albums. Uh, obviously, there's a million good albums that year, so I didn't. I'm, I'm gonna pick three that I think are really good, and I don't know if they're gonna get picked. So I don't want to steal anybody's thunder here since I'm going early. So the first one is, is one of my favorite albums, one of my favorite bands ever. It's their second album. The first album was kind of shelved. For, this is the first album with the, the classic iconic lineup, and that is the first Motor of the self-titled album. Nice. Uh, on Full was the first one from. 76 with uh, I think Larry or Wallace on guitar, but this is the first one with Fast Eddie. So, you know, Iron Horse, Born to Lose, White Line Fever. Uh, I don't think it's the best Motorhead album, but I think it's up there. One of the <laughs> first of that iconic era. So it's it's a great album. Uh, it holds up today. Obviously, Fear Drinkers and Hellraisers. This first, it's got the uh, orange oh, yeah. tracks on it from that set. That, uh, yeah, so that's, that's one of my favorites. Oops. Uh, the second one's a little band from New York City. They put out two albums that year. Both are good, but this one's my favorite. And that is the third Ramones album, Rockin' right. for Russia. Uh, yes. They're, yes. Yeah, they, they did Leave, uh, Leave Home and uh, Rockin' for Russia. And this is, I mean, kind of like Motorhead, a lot of the old Ramones stuff. It's similar. But uh, I don't know. They had a great sense of humor. Like they had Rockaway Beach, which is kind of like a happy song. But Rockaway Beach back then, you know, my understanding from the band, like you go there to get stabbed and like get your wallet stolen. So it wasn't like a nice, friendly place. But the song was like real upbeat and happy. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, Cretan. Reminds me of the Flintstones. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> Rockaway yeah. Beach, man, or up was also sort of like Coney Island. And they had an amusement park in Rockaway Beach when that song was what, what they're saying. Yeah, about. but Coney Island's awesome. 
Yeah. Rock of Ages was, was like a slum. I think. It was a slum, but there was an amusement park there. Though. So yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it's all. I get stabbed at Coney Island in '77 too. So. <laughs> they, they, I don't think they wrote a song about that. And of course, there's a the great cover of Serpent Bird on this album too. So my nice. third of the Moon's album, uh, great band, great album. And the last one, little uh, one of my favorite oh, bands. I think one of their. I know what this. I know what this is. No, you don't. I bet you don't know what it is, Steve. Uh, <laughs> actually, I, I I picked this one because the singer on this album, great vocalist, passed away recently. It's uh, John Lawton, and it was with Uriah Heep. And it's Fireball. Oh, heap. Oh, fire. So he's uh, uh, sang on a couple heap albums. What's up? I thought for oh. sure you were going to put Blaster Cult up on this one. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I, I mean, I figured uh, people are going to, uh, I didn't want to pick ah, that someone one. Else might oh, Spectres <laughs> is great. I think yeah, we all figured, Ryan, I think we all figured you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I mean, I'll, I'll zip it for a little while. I do got it right there. So, uh, I wanted to do this one because, yeah, Lawton passed away pretty recently. Uh, he's one of the best singers between uh, band ever had. And you're right. He had some great vocalists. And honestly, the first track on this, The Hanging Tree, it's great. one of the, uh, I think it's the best opening track on any other album, The Fucking Monster. And this is a great album. Uh, the stuff, some of the other albums you do with them was a little more AOR, a little less like froggy and heavy and weird. Still good stuff. But this was always uh, my favorite of the three John Lawton albums. So, yeah, I'm going with that. But yeah, I got a uh, ACDC, Oyster Cult, Judas Priest. I didn't want to pick these. Rush. Uh, I don't know if this one was going to get picked. Uh, the Sex Pistols album. The great album from 77. Sex Pistols. Uh, I don't want to steal this from Butch and Lizzie. And yes. You're so courteous that you don't want to steal all their favorites. <laughs> Those are just a quick honorable mentions. <laughs> I was actually listening to that Heap album at the gym today. Yeah, it's a great, it's such a good album. It really is. It holds up great. Yeah, it is. It is cool. All right, Nick, you're up. All right. Yeah, I, I could try not to pick the ones you guys are going to pick, but I I just have my basic knowledge of the year. Um, so uh, my tie for third is between Judas Priest and Motorhead. Um, I've, you know, what can you say? Sin after sin is amazing. Um, I, I, being the weird way into rock and metal that I, I had, I, I heard Dissident Aggressor when Slayer did it. So I didn't know. I was like, oh, I got to check this out. You know, so I had heard Ram It Down. I had heard some Judas Priest, <laughs> but I went backwards, anyway, you know, which is kind of funny. But um, it's come to me more and more to me as, as I've gotten older. Wait, Nick, I got to ask you now, now that you just said that it made me laugh. So yeah. what, did you, what did you feel or think when you heard Dissident Aggressor after you had started with Ram It Down. Ram It Down? <laughs> no, I knew I knew it was, well, I mean, I knew that it was it was them. Um, no, it was different. It was different. But uh, as I've gotten older, I've gotten more into classic uh, rock and, and stuff like that. I just, you know, I started out full, right into as heavy metal as I could possibly, you know, get. With it. After Maiden and the Metallic and Megadeth Slayer, it just went heavier and heavier for me. And as I've gotten older, I've appreciated um, more of the classic stuff. So, I'd have to pick, and of course, Motorhead's freaking the best. Motorhead's awesome. And then um, second, I would say is it has to be Animals by Pink Floyd. That that's just a uh, an absolute masterpiece that thematically resonates today. Um, and anything to do with Orwell's writing is, is amazing. But Floyd is Floyd, and you could just throw that album on. And I think you said it, Steve. They'll be listening to this probably long after we're all dust. It's just it's just mm. untouched amazingness um sheep is probably my favorite song on it. um and then my number one might be a little unusual i don't know if you guys are going to pick this but um i'm going to go with little queen by heart oh uh, good boy yeah good hell show. yeah it's on my honorable mentions yeah, that is a good I, one. Oh, man. hell it's, yeah you know, it, it's just it's just so good i and and boy i mean she's just amazing and um yeah. my favorite song on it believe it or not i mean we all love barracuda it's such a great song and when i was a little kid i remember like oh this is awesome but I love uh, Dream of the Archer, which reminds me of Battle of Evermore by um, by Zeppelin. And because I love Led Zeppelin IV, so I love all that. It's like that folky medieval kind of sound. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, um, I mean, I know Jethro Tull did similar things. So maybe in 1977, that wasn't that unusual. But um, as somebody who loves like folk metal and all that, you know, type of stuff, um, to go back and listen to Little Queen, and especially like Sylvan's song, Dream of the Archer, really, really strikes that chord. 
So, um, but yeah, the older I get, man, I just, I just love them more and more. And I saw Heart at one of the Sweden rock festivals in like 2004 or five. And I remember, you know, at that time I was in my twenties and I was shit house drunk, you know, that day no. we were, like, running around. Well, I, you know, I was waiting for all like the heavy bands to come on. And I, I wish I could go back. Like I watched them, but like, if it was now, I would have been like front and center at the, at the front. But in those days I was like a little wilder. And uh, <laughs> I, I wish I had paid more attention is all I can say. So those are my main three. Good picks, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. It's good to be back. Good to have you back. Yay, yeah. hey, Nick. All right, Lynn. All right, it's me. So I'm gonna be a dork because you know I am. Um, my number, I don't I don't really I didn't really number them. Three, two, one, four. I don't know. I didn't number them. This is the first one I'm mentioning. Nice. 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 Right, Fucking absolutely. oh my god, right? So the dork that I am, like I was like Elaine from Seinfeld, and Butch can relate because Butch has seen me do it all week long. You said 1977. I'm in my bedroom, like dancing, like <laughs> trying to pick out 1977 records like a freaking idiot. But um, that was my one that I was like, you know what? I can't not pick that. Fucking Steve Gat. Yeah. You know, I mean, the guy's amazing and I love that. So I, and Butch will again will appreciate this. So the song Peg, for years I'm singing, Hey, gonna get back to you. <laughs> Someone's like, you know they're saying Peg. I'm like, they are. Well, who the hell is Peg? <laughs> Did you think the song was the titled Hey? Yeah. You're right. I, was, I hey. thought the song was titled Hey. So, had that great wish to say it again. Hey. <laughs> what did you think? Of I don't know who the hell Peg is, but either way, that. I mean, uh, Deacon Blues, like it's on my yacht rock when I'm in the car, but they're freaking amazing. And, and honestly, on that Steely Dan uh, cover, I mean, on that track, Steve Gadd at one point at like, I think 457, he either, I don't know what it is. And maybe Mike knows, but he either drops sticks. I don't know if he picks the stick. I don't know what he does, but there's a noise in there. And I'm like, how, how do you make it? So that's the big question I'd like answered. I don't know the noise, but I mean, some of the fills on the title track, Asia, where he's doing bitter, 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 bitter like yeah. the classic Gad fills. Oh, so tasty. Yeah. He's oh, playing pretty, on the he's, whole album is incredible. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's so amazing. But if you listen to that song, like uh, at 457, you'll see the what I'm talking about. Mm. Again, there's there's questions as to how that came about, that noise particularly. Did he rim it? Did he click it? Whatever. But, you know, that all year also, uh, 1977 was the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Steve Gadd yeah. actually played on four of those friggin' tracks, wow. which was friggin' amazing. So I was pretty excited to hear that because, again, fucking Steve Gadd. So Steely Dan for one. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm gonna get uh, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're gonna sing that to me all week, Butch, which is totally fun. And I'll and I'll do my best Elaine dance. You know, oh. it's all right. But oh. Uh, listen, oh, how yep. could you not pick this one? Sticks the Grand Illusion. Take that one out, Pete. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My choices are quickly disappearing. <laughs> I'm with a big stack of records, man. I'm glad listen, I brought them. I don't see how many are left. This out. To me. Well, listen, the last of 11. I mean, that's, that's going to be tough. Just wrap Miss it up America, at the end. Yeah, 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 I sure. mean, for Probably 1977, Miss America was a pretty heavy song for, for a pop yeah. rock band back then, right? I mean, hey, don't fuck with JY. Ah, that's what I'm saying, right? So, and it's so funny because when I was their runner, you know, because I'm doing this stuff 30 years and I'm at the Mid Hudson Civic Center. And again, I knew everybody's names, except apparently I didn't know his name. And they're like <laughs> saying, JY, JY, who the hell is this JY character? As I'm sitting behind the guy's drum kit, taking pictures like an idiot. I didn't know who he was, but either way, uh, Tommy Shaw, you know, and me selfies all day at the Civic Center. So it sticks because I fucking love them. Um, also, The Stranger, Billy Joel. Nice. I mean, again, I mean, I've seen some Italian <laughs> restaurant, Vienna Waits for You, Vienna. moving out. <laughs> Vienna is one of like my favorite songs in the entire world. Like Vienna, Vienna? is a masterpiece. Vienna it's Waits for You? Yeah, chef's well, nice. The entire That's side amazing. one. I mean, side one ah. is a freaking mess. Uh, moving out, The Stranger, <laughs> Just the Way You Are, and Italian Restaurant. Italian Restaurant. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and this then album Vienna, could, Only the Good Die Young. This album could have been named Billy Joel's Greatest Hits. That's, that <laughs> totally. could have been the name of the album. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's just freaking amazing. So 
I can't not take that. Right. And, and, uh, let me see better. And uh, did I do bad out of hell? Meat no, loaf, bad out of hell. Because I you think did. that's the best. I, I just, that's the best meatloaf record. Right. I think anyway. Yeah, um, definitely is. and again, bad out of hell. You took Thank the words right out of my mouth. Must have been while you were kissing. No. Anyway, so all revved up, no place to go. Two out of three, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Just freaking amazing. I did have Priest because, you know, they're my favorite. And another New York City band that put out two records that year was Kiss with Love Gun and Kiss Alive. Uh, so yeah. uh, the Kiss Alive 2 record is my favorite Kiss record. Um, yes. Nice. <laughs> hey, look, twinsies. <laughs> um, but and then I did for my my little stupid honorable mentions. Not that I didn't mention it was Little Queen, and Kansas Point No Return, because that's the song I sing oh, whenever no. I sing stupid <laughs> open mic. Is Dust in the Wind because I'm an idiot, uh, and I like to have fun. So that's my albums, and um, it's good to be back, Mr. Fuckers. <laughs> Back hey, to the drawing board, hey, Pete. To, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pete. I'm That's sorry. Right. Don't hate me. That's all right. All right, Butch. I love you. I'm sure, Butch, I'm sure Butch is going to be on mine too. So you know. Uh, I don't think I don't think so. No, okay. honestly, I, I don't want to mine though. Probably. Uh, I've got a few. But he's got his own unique stuff. stuff. You, you, you. Go. Well, it's obvious what number one's going to be, but. Oh, no, um, that's an idea. I'm I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna I know do... you do like that Steely Dan record, though. Steely Dan is great. That, that record is absolutely great. Yeah. Um, didn't make my list. It didn't make my my top three. That's all um, right. But I'm going to cheat and do a, um, a tie for third just because I have to get this guy in. Um, he made two tremendous records in 1977. Um, both albums contain a guitar player from Thin Lizzy. Mm-hmm. Canadian, and I had to pick one of the two albums, and this is definitely my favorite of the two. I love them both, but Pat Travers, I only have the I have the CD of this one, so I'm sorry I have the little thing here if you can see it. Putting it straight with Nico McBrain on drums. Nice, awesome my record. choice too. I always, That's always, I always love that album cover with him with the pedal board from 1977, a, a Pete Cornish pedal board. In 1977, and so the guy with the glasses like this on the back. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love that album cover. Exactly. Nice. Um, so my tie for third with that. Uh, I I loved them when they were fucked up, man. I'm sorry. If you can see it, Errol awesome. Smith. Can't see Butchie. Oh, draw the line. I know. Okay. I, wish I, could I knew you were picking that. I knew you were picking that one, but but draw the line because it, it has my absolute number one Errol Smith song of all time. Um, that actually I had the greatest hits first before I actually even had Draw the Line and was on the greatest hits, um, which is Kings and Queens. Uh, I, I, I song. love that song. song. God damn. Every time I hear it now, I feel the same way I did when I was like 10 or 11 when I first heard it. Butterflies. Um, huh? Butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a solid album, Butch. That's a solid album. That's a solid yeah. album. Absolutely. And it gets a lot of shit for some reason. I don't understand why. That I, think it's, I think it's definitely overlooked from their catalog. Um, this is my top one and two were, were simple. As soon as you said what the subject was going to be, they were instantly, it was no thought. It was figuring out what three was going to be. Um, I love this band since 1977. Um, this is the greatest <clears throat> logo in rock history as far as I'm concerned. This is one of the coolest <laughs> album covers of all time. Angels on Earth and as it is in Heaven. It's yep. You and, love that. And logo. People, no one but for people that have never seen this before, yeah. As you turn it upside down, it's still the same thing. The best logo ever. Absolutely. Ever. It is killer. This album, and it came with a poster, and I think I have the po I didn't put it back in here being an idiot. It I gotta killer. find it. But the poster came with this record. I'm pretty sure I still have it somewhere. But that album, this album is just, is, oh my God. Produced by Eddie Kramer from Kiss and Jimi Hendrix fame, Zeppelin fame too. Um, if you've never heard this record, Frank Domino, I've talked about him numerous times on these shows, is still in my top three singers of all time. And only a handful of people know him. His voice is unbelievable. Yeah. 
and uh-huh. Greta Freya. So there you go. Yeah, I was going to say you're me- forgetting someone. Form. Yes. From the inside. The order I don't have the poster Thanks. in it, but I got the merchandise. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and Punky Metals obviously is one of the guys that, that made me want to pick up pick up a guitar when I was a kid. Him and Ace Frehley, both Casablanca guys. Those are the guys that made me want to play oh, yeah. guitar. Oh, Punky's and, gonna uh, be happy. Gia, for me, what could be number one? Then Lizzie's bad reputation. So, no way. Come on. I'm get shot. out. Jeez. I was Are you sure uh, about that? Expecting that one. Are you sure about You'll that? You'll never be able to see this, but if you can see up here, it's autographed by Scott Gorm, if you can see. Nice. Yeah. So, um, I love this record. I, I hate that they didn't put Brian Robertson on the cover. I know he didn't play on the whole record. He played a, a handful of solos, but the handful of solos he played are monstrous. This is just an incredible record. And having Mike on here, Brian Downey is one of the most underrated drummers in, rock, in hard rock history. That guy gets no credit for anything. His shuffle, the way he played. Oh, my God. Brian Downey is a great drummer. And that is easily my favorite album of 1977, Bad Reputation from Thin Lizzy. Simple. Very cool. Nice. Sydney, on to you. Cool. Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Can I, I'm, I'm supposed to do honorable mentions now, or you want to do them later? <laughs> cool. I'll, wait, I'll give I you, I'll, I'll give you honorable mentions, but I'll, I'll mention stuff that nobody's going to pick. Okay? I'll do that quick. That? So, so 77, Detectives debut record. Oh my God. Yeah. Love that song. Michael DeBar, tremendous yep. record. Um, Scorpions Taken by Force, my, oh, one of my favorite yeah. albums of the Yuli era. That's a great Scorpions album. Right? There yeah. you go. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Um, I'm going to go up way the off the board and say Live in the Air Age from Bebop Deluxe. Absolutely. Live record. Tremendous. I'm, I love Bill Nelson. Staying with live records, you gotta say uh, Fog Hat Live because Lonesome Dave and Rod Price is the, is the greatest slide guitar player I've ever seen in my life. He, he was tremendous. <laughs> um, and two other ones again, I'll, I'll mention them a bunch, but no one's gonna mention these. So the band City Boy, I love them because Mike Slamer, guitar player, Young Man Going West, great record. And I gotta say, The Baby's uh, Broken Heart, too. Nice. I'm pretty safe that no one's going to say those. Nice. There's a whole bunch of nope, other babies. There. I forgot about the babies. So I'm good sorry, one. Sydney. You're fine. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So my number three, uh, I'm going to go with the debut record of a band that has become one of my favorite bands over the years. And that is Foreigner's self-titled nice. record. Um, I mean, there's right off the bat, I mean, there's three of their biggest hits on this. Feels like the first time, Cold as Ice, Long, Long Way From Home. Um, Star Riders are really Star great. Rider. Star Riders for yeah, amazing. And Star actually, Rider. I know that some people kind of don't constitute the foreigner that's now foreigner as foreigner because I know it doesn't have Luke Graham. But I still have Kelly Hansen. Uh, but Mick Jones is in the band and they actually did that when I saw them live. So they yep. did Star Rider and it was like so freaking amazing. They sounded um, amazing. Absolutely. I love this album. I mean, for a debut record, they got their sound like right out of the gate and I love Foreigner. So They're that's my, album. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, my favorite, my favorite Foreigner album is probably Head Games, but this is really close behind too. it. Yeah. Uh, favorite yeah. One. Um, I'm sorry, Mike, I'm probably going to take your pick. Sorry, Pete, I'm probably going to take your pick, but I was like, I can't not say this one. It's going to be Farewell the Kings, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm never going to live that down. Thanks, Pete. I'll never forget it. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with UFO Lights Out um, because Love to Love is one of my favorite songs on the planet, um, even though I like the Strangers in the Night version better. Yeah. Um, I love the studio version just as much. You know, Too Hot to Handle. I couldn't find my CD downstairs, so I don't have a prop, but I saw Jim held it up. Um, but Too Hot to Handle, you know, Lights Out. It's just UFO, I'll die in the hill that they're way underrated and overlooked and they've become one of my favorite all-time bands and i know everybody on this panel loves them too so i had to do you a photo sure. right yeah it's I'm a perfect record. That one. <laughs> That's a perfect and then record. uh doing my number one this was a no-brainer for me i knew this was going to be my number one the second we picked this year and that's with mac, mac rumors i knew it i knew it um, i could you not i've been doing yes. a dive on this album this year really and it's funny because i was really going to history and I think what makes this album so great and I mean everybody knows about the history of this album but it's just like the raw emotion that is felt 
in this album from what was going on in this band at that time I was going back and watching the um the go your own way video and Stevie and Lindsay just like staring at each other and like just the the tension like there was just so much real emotion and stuff that went into it yeah it's raw and I think that that's what makes it so just so great so amazing top to bottom I mean this could be a Fleetwood Mac greatest hits itself you know definitely that's why I didn't pick it Sid I knew you were picking that I was like I'm leaving that for her I'm leaving it for her yeah and then then they jumped into a pile of cocaine for Tusk and that was that yeah I I will say though if I like Mirage. Around... Mirage is a good record. I mean, I, I like that, but those are my three. And then for my honorable mentions, I had The Stranger, of course, because Vienna is just one of my favorites. Um, I had Eddie Money's self-titled record, which yeah. I love. You know, uh, Eddie Money, I, he's like my go-to if I just want to like feel good, like him and, <laughs> and uh, ELO. <laughs> um, I just, ELO. I love Eddie Money. Um, and then also I had to mention my... Uh, Excellent. expected pick the Alice Cooper show <laughs> <laughs> uh, which was really funny Alice at this point dreaded recording this he, he hated that tour at this time he f- didn't want to do it so every time he talks about this or thinks about this record he thinks about how much he didn't want to record it so I think about that every time I listen to it too but it's still phenomenal I mean it's the welcome to my nightmare tour essentially um so I had to mention that and again, the Ramones, one of my, Ramona is one of my favorite Ramones songs. So yeah, I'm not going to pick any more, <laughs> any more picks for the <laughs> so, That is mine. Cool. Go to your own. Mike Portnoy. Hey, so Sydney, you're safe because even though uh, I'm wearing this shirt, Lights Out wasn't in my top three, but if this was 1978, Strangers of the Night would have absolutely been in yeah. the top three. Absolutely. It would have been on everybody's list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. number one for yeah. everybody. I was going to say we all would have been fired. But I mean, I, I feel bad for Martin and Jim and Pete because <laughs> I know a couple that are definitely on Jim's list that have not I'm been mentioned. I'm fine. Yet. I got a ton, so don't worry. Okay. <laughs> well, do I pick? Do I do I put my honorable mentions in here, or I'm going to give you my top three, even though they've been mentioned already. But uh, '77 for me was a weird a weird year of transition. Like I thought we did 76 last month. I thought 76 was a strong year. Yeah. I think 78 is a stronger year. Yeah. 77 was like a big transition because it was the year that punk rock broke. It was the year that disco broke. I mean, Saturday Night Fever was the biggest album of the year. Uh. And so many mainstream classics, you know, talking about Meatloaf, Billy Joel, Farner, uh, you know, so there's a, a lot of that stuff, but wasn't much prog. Prog was the classic prog stuff. British prog was on its way out. Metal was still getting going like i don't think metal really hit its heyday for like 80 81 82 but uh for me uh i mean my number four and five were were these because as far as i was concerned 77 was the year of punk rock so oh, talked yeah. about rocket to Russia, like, the first clash right. album this is my number four but we're not going to talk about a number four but this is to me an incredible perfect album but the number I mean, we're talking about the it, last minute as well. That was my yeah. number four, actually. <laughs> yeah, that was my, my, my number five, four. And then the one that's to come are all punk rock, which I know is not the sea of tranquility audience. But there is no way that this cannot be in the top three. Hell this, yeah. This there went the, my number one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was my number one. Yeah. Me this too. is the English. This is the English cover. This is the box set. And then yeah. uh, the American version was the pink cover. This is white. Like, and green. But I, I don't think you could have a more influential record than this this was a complete game changer i would say this and nirvana's nevermind were were two of the most important albums to take a genre and just blow the doors wide open and change everything and whether you love them or hate them there's no denying how big this album was and it was a cultural change at the time and you know the ramones were, were were cool and the clash were probably my favorite musically of all the pop uh punk bands but uh I mean, this was the most groundbreaking. And uh, what other band in music history ever only put out one album? I mean, they, they've had compilations and live albums and great rock and roll swindle and all that stuff. But this was it, really one album. And every track is a classic from top to bottom. And Glenn Matlock was the original bass player that wrote all these tunes, but Sid Vicious plays in the album. And it was a short but uh, sweet career. Sweet. So Sex Pistols at number three. My number two and number one have been mentioned, but if I'm being honest, these are my number two and my number one. Number two, Sydney's favorite, uh, Russia's Farewell to Kings. 
this was um, them in the middle of an incredible streak of albums that began with 2112 and go all the way to moving pictures. I think those are five perfect albums in a row, but this was when they were really starting to get their stride and take the, the prog elements of 2112 and then just expand on them even more. Uh, Xanadu is one of the greatest rush tracks of all time. Cygnus X1 was one of the greatest prog tracks from Rush and the, the title track as well. It's just a classic, classic Rush album. Some of Neil's greatest drumming uh, and a classic. And number one, it's already been mentioned a few times, but there's, there's no way that this could not be my number one album of the year and it's Pink Floyd Animals. And uh, you know, everybody knows Dark Side of the Moon, everybody knows The Wall, everybody knows Wish You Were Here, but this is like the bastard stepchild of, of those four albums. And uh, it's the one that's talked about the least of those four classic albums from the 70s, but it's the one that I go to the most because it's probably the least played out. You know, uh, everybody's heard Wish You Were Here, Dark Side of the Moon to death, but this is like the proggiest of the four 70s albums. You know, it's got Sheep and uh, Sheep and Dogs are both really long tracks, which by the way, both uh, were written for the Wish You Were Here album. They, they were originally told, uh, called, um, raving and drooling and uh, you got to be crazy and they were held off the wish you were here album and then they revisited them for animals and then of course you got uh pigs on the wing one and two opening and closing the album and the eight track of animals has pigs on the wings one and two as a single track with a, a, gu a guitar solo that's only available on the eight track uh which Ooh, is very, very interesting wow yeah and that's then pigs, cool yeah so i mean this is it's just such a classic floyd album it's um Roger Waters at, at his most cynical and jaded. And uh, um, it's this is the only one that they haven't done a big giant deluxe box set yet. Uh, but apparently there's one on the way, which I can't wait for. So that's my my tops. I don't, should I do honorable mentions now or save them? Pete, what's-, what's yeah, You can rattle off a couple, good. I mean, a, a couple that have been mentioned already. You know, we already mentioned Kiss Alive too. This was the year yeah. that I saw Kiss Live for the first time. Uh, Genesis Seconds Out. Um, this was- uh, Pretty much the end of this era for Genesis. And uh, and uh, it also has some stuff from the 76 tour that Bill Bruford played drums on, which was an incredible lineup. Uh, yes is going for the one, oh, yeah. which is a classic. Uh, yeah. Rick Wakeman's return to the band. Um, and uh, a lot of great songs on here. Parallels and, and uh, the title track and also uh, the epic. Uh, what was the epic on this one? Uh, uh, the last song. Uh, I don't, I don't have it off, off the tip of my tongue, but... Uh, Awaken? Yes, Awaken, thank you. Already been mentioned, uh, Billy Joel's The Stranger, and uh, Taken by Force, Scorpions. Yeah. Point of No Return, Sin After Sin, incredible drumming by Simon Phillips. Uh, uh -huh. Amazing album. And one that hasn't been mentioned yet. Here I don't it believe it hasn't been mentioned yet. But yep, I've been waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I was, was going to say, yeah. that one's on my list. It's like, no one's mentioned Queen yet. Yeah, yep. there you go. So that's, that that's a huge record. Who has a huge record? All right, Jim. Okay, uh, Mike, thank you for not mentioning. I, I know do, what's coming. Do you have you. them? Because I don't have them. Do you have the actual? I, have, I, I probably have the Pop CDs in the other room. If we're talking okay. about the same two albums. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is so the, the weird thing for me is make this list based on how I feel now or me as a like 13, 14 and 15 year old, you know, from 1977, seven, listening to those <laughs> records, because a lot of them like Sticks Grand Illusion. I listened to that in 1977 a lot, yeah. but I don't listen to it as much now. Angel on Earth as it is in heaven. I love that album then. I still love it now, but like you know, your taste change. I still obviously love all of it, but uh, my my top, everyone kind of picked my top ones, but I'm just, <laughs> just going to do it anyway. But this, the first number three uh, is two albums. It's the debut Cheap Trick album and In Color. They both came out in 77. Nice. And yeah, those are, I, that, thank you for holding them up. I don't have either of them on physical copies right now, um, but Obviously, usually influential for me and great records. Uh, Back in so, the day when all four of them were allowed on the cover. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Before they figured out, they'll put the two geeks on the back. Right. Two cool looking guys on the front. Um, yeah, but it, I, I, out of the two, I, I'd pick in color only because uh, 
I, I just, I like it's produced a little better and all that. Uh, the first one's a little bit raw, but they're both great. Chock full of great songs, obviously. Jim, have you have you heard the the re, the the live version that uh, Albini did of In Color, Steve Albini? No. Oh my God. That was a while. He did that a while ago, right? Like '96, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's 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 heavy, and it's them live in the studio playing the whole record. Oh, it's, I gotta get it's that. It's really good. You would love that, man. Ah, cool. Thanks, thanks, for Tim. I I have the. The Sex America box said, I don't know if it's on that or not, but I don't know. I don't think um, so. Uh, yeah, I, I got to get that. I definitely yeah. got to hear that. Um, okay, so my going to number two, and these are records that back then um, I just listened to them all, all, all the time, and they're still favorites. So, duh, UFO Lights Out. I love nice. this record. I mean, Michael Shanker is God, and he proves it on this record. So, there you go. There. Um, and my number one is, you know, sorry again, <laughs> Farewell to Kings. Uh, this was the first new Rush album that I got. Like I got in 77, I got uh, All the World's a Stage. And then a, a month or so later, this appeared in the store. And I'm like, wow, this isn't on the inside of the cover as the old albums. It's the new, you know, newest one. So I, you know, Mike basically said it all. This album is just Xanadu, Farewell to Kings. Just genius. So yeah. those are my three, and then I have a million runner-ups. I'm not gonna. I'm not, I'll run through them at the end because there's so many, and there's a lot of them that people haven't mentioned. So cool. Those are to be expected from me. So all right, Chris. All right, uh, I'll make it quick. Uh, my uh, the bottom of my list. Uh, one of my favorites, which is uh, a favorite from now, from 1977, it was already mentioned by a couple people. Uh, taken by force from the Scorpions. This is the nice. terrible cover. Uh, I love the Uli John Roth era of Scorpions. I mean, I love all, all the eras, even the crappy, poppy, uh, cock rock stuff. But man, the Uli John Roth uh, era to me was just uh, magic. Um, in 1977, I was not like a real Kiss fan, like like uh, like like Jim and Mike. I mean, I was on the fringe. Like I wanted the Kiss Migos so I could have them fight my Kiss Batman and Robin. You know, I saw you know I saw them on TV. And I, I just was at a fair the other day with uh, with Steve, and I, I have this uh, memory of going to this fair in uh, fall of 77, and I don't know if they were giving them away or if they were like prizes, if you did one of those stupid things where, you know, you, you go to a fair and you throw a balloon at a dart or whatever, but like every kid but me got the fucking paper love gun gun. They were like oh. giving them out at this fair, or it was a prize, yeah. and... All these kids were doing the same thing. They were, they would, you know, shoot wow. it as fast as they could, and the paper was breaking in the middle. And I Dude. remember being a kid picking up all the broken paper love guns off the ground, <laughs> and my mom wouldn't let me take them home. And oh. I still don't have one, but I, I eventually did get the record. Uh, my sister actually got the uh, Alive and Love Gun from when she got a job at Caldor because she got a discount in like '79 <laughs> when Kiss, Kiss was already on the way out uh but of course i got this used and there's no there's no paper gun but um it's like my second favorite kiss record uh i'm not a huge kiss fan again like these guys but they were cool but hey i do have the kiss migos so um that's pretty cool my that's number one story i've um, ever heard say my, my, with the love guns that's like the saddest story i've ever heard my my so story <laughs> santa my fifth grade teacher uh took it from me in class oh, and took it away from me yeah oh. the, the love gun I was popping Jeez. it in class and she took it from me and you never got it back you never no, i never back. got it back oh. until i had to buy the reissue a few years ago to get wow. it. Oh, yeah that's that way sad still has it <laughs> Sorry, i tried mine it didn't work i, I like i, I remember taping mine I remember playing with it and breaking it and having to tape it so we could continue yeah. to work. I mean, I wish I had all those broken ones. They'd be worth nah. something. Oh, shit, they would be. <laughs> but, I mean, now I want one. Yeah. I got I mean, they're probably on eBay, but um, my, my legit $1 number one, uh, it's a tie for my uh, number one favorite album. Uh, I must have listened to both these albums. I couldn't tell you how many times. Uh, when I was telling my wife about this this thing, she's like, well, what's... What was your number one? I was like, oh, in 1977, I had a life-changing experience. She's like, you were six. She's like, you barely had any life. She's like, what could be your life-changing experience? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I saw Star Wars. I don't know how many times that year. 
This is the uh, this one is the story of Star Wars. So this is just dialogue and bits of the music, along with some narration. It tells you the story because you know what, kids? In 1977, there was no cable, there was no internet, there yeah. was no VC. They didn't yeah. have shit. You you either had to go to the theater again, like I did numerous times that year and for many years after, or um, you had to listen to it and and of course listen to the soundtrack album. Uh, from John Williams. This one is still sealed. This has original air from 1977 in here, which wow. will not be released. <laughs> and uh, poster. But, but that's, uh, it's got that's the poster so and the, the sticker. And uh, just as, a, as an honorable mention, uh, you know, Mike mentioned 1977 being the year of punk. You know, I absolutely agree. But the, the one omission, my all-time favorite punk band, one of my all-time favorite bands, spend, I spend God knows how much money on this band, even to this day. This is not an original. Originals go for 10 grand. But 1977 was the first ever release from the Misfits. Oh, wow. Uh, this oh, was their Cough Cool 7-inch, which they released in 1977. This is a nice bootleg I got. But, yeah, originals go for 10 grand. And, wow. Um, wow. Yeah, that's it. That's my, that's my list. Wow. You know what I used to do back then, talking about, like, uh, there was no – VCRs, no cable to watch these movies. I used to sneak in tape recorders to my favorite movies. Wow. So I, I actually had tapes of uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show and Rocky, Rock and Roll uh. High School and Clockwork <laughs> Orange and Yellow Submarine. I would take the tapes home and then just re-listen to the movies over and over to learn That's the dialogues awesome. and just relive it. Because there was, you know, There's back no then, way to do it. if you didn't see it in the theater, you maybe, you know, once a year, like Yellow Submarine would come on TV once a year or something yeah. like that. But I used to tape record the, the movies and take a moment and listen to them that way. That, that is so awesome. cool. I got a really awful discussion to make that you guys are all going to want to kick me off right now. Uh -oh. I've never seen any Star Wars movies. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. <laughs> go. How is that possible? Even yeah, I'm on. saying, yeah. yeah. Not even one. I don't know what I was doing. I just wasn't interested in it. It was probably too what? obsessed with Kiss. Yeah. In 1977, to care about Star Wars. Oh I man! Go, I tried to watch it way later in life, and I was the first one, and I was like, "You missed it." I, I didn't. I just. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you definitely. And, missed and everybody it. I know, like, is like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" And I'm like, "I don't know what I was doing. I just wasn't watching Star Wars in 1977." Thanks, certainly <laughs> off the hook for not liking Rush now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that beat too. me out. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> And Chris, I, I gotta say, I had both right, of those Star start. Wars albums. I used to play the blue one all the time. All the time, right? I mean, I would still go see the movie like every other week. So. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, like, I didn't, you, know, you needed that fix. You know, yeah. there was also the Marvel comic adaption and the uh, the paperback novel, but that was it, man. You know, it was, it was all yeah. we had to get us through. My my dad just rebought that on eBay because he had one when he was a kid, and he <coughs> God knows what happened to it. And it was that funny. It actually, he actually bought it. I don't know exactly how much he got it for but he just got it like two months ago so that's awesome. it's funny that you brought that up jim i'm i'm way more on your side than their side i like i've, I've only seen the, the original first two and then by the time jedi came out i was getting older and, and out and i didn't care and i and i uh, went back but uh, yeah, yeah and I'm a crazy old old so uh you know i'm a, I'm a little older i'm like three four years older than you so i was like 14 so i was already into music and I didn't care about science fiction. So I was already super deep into rock and roll and going to shows and buying records. So yeah, I don't know what happened. You know, maybe if I yeah. watch them now, I'll get them, but I don't know, it's weird. You weren't in the science fiction, but you love Rush. <laughs> How does that to do with the price of tea in China? What? It's the guitar. It's the that has guitar. a lot to do with it. When... <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. I, had, I, I know, know of like- Nice. This Everyone is I know is just like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm like, yeah. Chris, this is original. I see that. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth anything because it's, I played with the shit. Yeah, because you took it out of the box, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> it was little. Whoa, 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 Butch. Who, listen, come, that's coming from the guy who gets the fucking Ozzy Randy tour book and cuts oh, it no, up. Oh, no, Butch does yeah. not take anything out of the box. You go to his house, it's like a fucking museum. Yeah, but we Nothing saw that he chopped the up the fucking Ozzy tour book. So it don't go. It was given to me, and I had to put Randy Rhodes on the wall. There's, there's a complete reason right. for that. That's different. That, and that's <laughs> the struggle is real with that. I, like, I managed to not cut any of these up. Nice. Like, they're still yeah. intact. And that's really, really hard because I yeah. to, I just bought the posters instead and kept them. But 
Yeah. Oh, he never took his David Lee Roth thing out of his Van Halen record to give no, me to put above my bed. But if it was, if it was Edward, it would have been out on my wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Martin, I don't know. You and I were last. I I don't think okay. I got anything left, but uh, well, I'm pretty good with this. I, I've got I've got a lot of stuff no one's mentioned. So I'm gonna blast through some honorable mentions real quick. First Boomtown Rats mm -hmm. album, good heavy album, clean production. Mutt Lang produced this album, believe it or not. Wow, 1977. Uh, keeping it punk here. The first Dead Boys, heaviest punk album of uh, for, out of America, I would say. Love this to death. Got it as a new release. Very cool. Um, this I, I had out just to show because I thought someone would mention it. But Ted Ted Nugent, Cat Scratch Fever. I was but waiting for that. It's yep. a pretty it's pretty low on my Ted Nugent list. I'd I'd rate this yeah, at a seven. Um, the Saints, I'm Stranded, the debut from the Australian band. Good, heavy punk album, just ferocious, ferocious production. But my favorite of theirs is their second one, Eternally Yours. Uh, the only heavy punk album from 19, from the 70s period out of Canada, The Diodes. This is very well produced. They were on CBS Canada. Um, and their second and third album were not heavy at all. Uh, and then uh, Derringer, Sweet Evil. I, I yeah, put boy. quite high as a... Uh, as you know, uh, essentially an Aerosmith album. It's a I mean, great it's great fucking record. It's basically this, an Aerosmith album. I like so the look. Cool. We should bring that look back. Yeah, yeah. Um, like okay, so look. so my top three. I'm actually not going to change one of them because it was my number one, and I'll just mention it briefly again. But oh yeah, one more that almost made my list. Spectres. Ah, uh, yeah. And then yeah. another oh, one that right. almost made my list. The debut from the Damned. Another great album. But my top three are in reverse order. Three, let's go with Dictator's Manifest Destiny. Cross the ball. Love it to death. Uh, good uh, Blood Brothers, I always rated my top five albums of all time by anybody. <laughs> but this is a great album as well. There's the guys down there. Handsome Dix, uh, where is he at? And here he is on the back, kind of uh, in his cocoon state. Uh, there's the rest of the guys. Uh, but this is a is a good, heavy, semi-punky album. Um, it's got poppy stuff as well, the Iggy Pop cover. My number two is the second album by The Damned. Uh, this was the one where they wanted Sid Barrett, Sid Barrett to produce, but they got Nick Mason instead. Um, the cover is uh, based on a Kandinsky painting. It's a, it's a well-produced uh, album. Uh, a lot of Damned fans don't like it. Um, they think it's uh, just too clean and behaved, but it's got the great rat scabies drumming on it. There's the, the wild shots in the back. There's rat down there, killer drumming on this record. Um, and then my number one had to be this uh, because it just simply, as Mike said, so eloquently start to finish every single song is a classic. It doesn't let up. Great production, great lyrics very foreign alien incendiary vocals it felt like the whole world was caving in i mean it literally felt like these guys could could uh you know destroy uh modern civilization with this record it was very very <laughs> dangerous sounding but every single song's an absolute anthem uh as as i've said before this was one of the first albums along with rainbow rising and acdc let the be rock from this year uh, where we as kids realized there wasn't a single song on this record that is not heavy. Um, so, and, and the Motorhead as well, right? Uh, it was those four albums were the first albums. So yeah, that had to be my number one. So uh, there you go. Cool. cool. Thanks. All right. So what I'm going to do here is... Uh... <laughs> hey, hey, I know you got one that's on my list that you, you're going to say. Uh... Or Pete's like, I mean, like I said, I have I nothing like 15 CDs. There's Every time three. that you you kept people kept talking, I kept watching you. You kept like looking over at your pile and <laughs> going like, like oh, 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 oh. all right, that one's out. <laughs> yeah, one, yeah, yeah. I have a list. It's two I'm pages. I'm gonna give you long. my original top three, and then I'm gonna give you an alternate three because there are three. I could have sworn one of you mentioned their name but i don't think you mentioned the album so and one was definitely not mentioned and i don't think the other one was either so all right so here was my original top three uh farewell the kings yeah grand illusion and animals yeah. so just to be a little different here and and again i love all of these so these were all going to be honorable mentions but my alternate three uh gentle giant playing the fool one of the great live albums of the 70s. Out of the Blue by ELO. 
I think Sydney mentioned ELO. I thought she did. Someone did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Songs from the Wood by Jethro Tull. That's the one I, I knew. Had, I had, you had that. That's on my list. I, and Pete's got to have that one left. No one else picked it. Yeah. So nice. I mean, you know, there. I mean, there's so many great ones. I'm, I'm even looking at my like long list on my spreadsheet here. I mean, this. I mean, I'm surprised Martin didn't mention Max Webster, High Class and Borrowed. Yeah, cheese. I had it on my list. What else we have here? Peter Gabriel one. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Uh, Iggy Pop, one. the idiot, the Jam in the City. Um, let's see, David Bowie, Heroes. Yep. Uh, the Jam. This is the Modern World. Uh, I draw the line. Scorpions. Brian Eno, Before and After Science. Love it to death. Moxie, Riding High. Super Moxie, heavy Canadian yes. album. Uh, that's it. I had, you know, I had obviously most of the other ones that everybody. <laughs> Man, I can't yeah. believe I forgot David Bowie. Yeah. Just, oh, you're fine. Oh, wow. Yeah. David Bowie. I'm sad now. You forgot Bowie? Can I go back? Can I like, yeah. can we go back and like do over. this? And can we just do this again? Well, we need to do it over. David Bowie <laughs> in other words, you want to take it, you want to hop in a time machine and go back to like eight o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> It's one hour. Fuck eight eight o'clock. I'd like to go back to 1982, please. Can I go back to 1977? We forgot one. We forgot a lot of stuff on here. Yeah, that's that's not one movie. One movie, Smokey and a Bandit. We didn't mention. Oh yeah, I love that movie. And hey, movie. Pete, um, as we wind this up, I have uh, a a tidbit of news for our community to to let everyone know, because as we were doing recording this, someone messaged me about this, so. I kind of want to let, let you guys know, I guess let the world know, um, Mike Howe of Metal Church died. Oh, oh. 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 I hear that. When? Oh. It, it, oh. I, it was released an hour ago from Metal Church. They, so my friend just messaged me the, the uh, announcement from Metal Church that oh. it was an hour ago. So when oh. we started filming, I, it, I guess shit. it was announced. I love that, that guy. Not, not old. Not old. Oh. Oh. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. His memory. Jeez. Rest in peace. Just wanted to let oh. everyone know that. I was in the studio with those guys when they were recording his first album, uh, at Cajun Victory. I was I went up there with Terry Date and hung with them for the weekend oh, wow. for his first album. Wow, that's horrible news. Yeah, that yeah. sucks. Best your band was getting on a roll. Eddie to Jabs is going to be yeah. sad. Writing new stuff. Oh man, that sucks. Wow. And that's the second because David David I Wayne, was just going to say uh, Jesus, as well. Two so singers two. from that band. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yep. Hmm. That's, wow. Uh, and uh, yeah, I didn't even know. Him. I didn't even know he was ill. Did anyone else know? I don't know if he, that if he was or not. I mean, let me no, see. I haven't heard anything. Did they like post it on like? Facebook? It's on. It's on Facebook. Wow. It just says that he uh, that he mm -hmm. passed away this morning in his home in Eureka, California. So mm -hmm. we are devastated and uh, oh. at loss and we're lost for words. Please respect our privacy. So it doesn't say anything that he was sick or anything. So I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Right. You never know. That yeah. sucks. Yep, and it was an hour ago. Yep. Wow. Hmm. Yes, yeah, I just got the text too. He was only fifty-five too. He was pretty young. Jesus. Yeah. And he he looked like in perfect shape when you'd meet him. I know. Yeah. You know, like when, he, when you saw him, he was. Oh, he was all over the stage. He was yeah. a ball of energy, man. He was like watching uh, suicidal tendencies. He never stopped for a second. You know, bouncing around. He was great. Yeah, it's a tra tragic loss for. Yeah. that is why they say live life like every day is your last and always say something nice to the leaving because you just never know everyone should say a prayer for gary rosington too you just never know entered back on tour this week get pulled off for emergency heart surgery i'm like well that's that, that this and this is why yeah. gary and them said that they were going to retire a couple of years ago and yeah, yeah. jeff labar too who I love Cinderella, and he just passed. Oh away. yes, like, yeah. fifty-eight, and just That's too young. Really young, terrible. Well, him and Gary Corbett within uh, twenty-four hours yeah. of each other, two yeah. Cinderella members. It's yeah, it's crazy. Well, shame. Hmm. Yep. Sorry, All right. Well. Way to bum us out, man. <laughs> 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 I'm like, can we somebody say something happy? <laughs> Yeah, someone needs a, a positive message. <laughs> yes, Chris Allo, save us, please. Yeah, say something funny. Tell us, give us something funny. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> All I got. Chris Allo, you are not the father. I am. I am not the father or the mother. So. <laughs> I, well, I'll try to well, I might out. be the mother, but. <laughs> if anybody's in the Middletown area this Saturday, come out to the Orange County Fair. I'm going to be there. Yeah. The Iron Maidens are playing. You can come to my store first and come check out. 
straight Iron Maiden cover band. And uh, one of my pals, her name's Abby K. She actually is opening up for the Iron Maidens at that show. Oh, oh yeah, cool. I heard about that in opening yeah. act. Are, are you going to make it up, Sydney? Um, I unfortunately have tickets to see Guns N' Roses on that night. So. <laughs> Pete, close your ears. I know, but I do. It's my first. It's my first show back. So that's, a, that's a Hershey Park, right? Yeah. Here's yep. The, here's the first show. And uh, and Wolfgang, Wolfgang Van Halen's opening. So that's I'm excited. Yeah, report back about Wolfgang. Yeah, I I'm really excited for that because he just was posting about rehearsals and I love the album. So. Not, not three fifths of Guns N' Roses, but about Wolfgang. Oh, I know. Nice. And we're, go to Hershey Park and ride all the coasters and go to the concert and have a blast. Yeah. Well, this Iron Maiden's show will be my first show back. So Love that. Nice. Hopefully uh, humanity wins and we get all of our shit back. Uh, Orange County <laughs> Fair, please order more beer. Nick Franco's coming. Oh, I'm going to be shit house. I'm going to be shit house. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be shit house. And the next time Peter Pardo and Chris Allo come to the brewery four hours before I have to work, I'm kicking your butts. Lynn, you're going, right? Going where? I have to work. No, you don't. <laughs> you're sick. I then. work. Yeah, I'm not sick. sick. Fuck you, pay me. I'm a single mom. I need you pay me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pay her wages and she'll come to the show with you, Nick. There you go. I don't drink, so I might as well bartend and make cash, right? Oh, oh. A driver for Nick. I'll drink. And not to you. mention, Pete, can I just say that I just started a new freaking job today. I'm the development director for the Dutchess County SPCA. So nice. if anybody wants to freaking help the animals or do anything, you know. Yeah, seriously, that's awesome. That's really yeah, helpful. So I'm pretty happy. I'm still working for the senator and bartending, but this is my main gig now, development director for there. So awesome. Cool. Help the animals. You can adopt a friendly pet that's like Daisy. I just woke up straight. Or not so oh, friendly pet. Chihuahua. They need love too. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, we all need love. People that are friendly and not so friendly still need love. That's Thank right. you. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, uh, Mr. Portnoy, you want to give uh, our viewers a little update? What's going on with you? I know you got lots of things uh, happening over the next couple months. Uh, what's going on? I got uh, a Neil Morse Band album coming out, uh, I guess, in a couple weeks at this point, end of August. Uh, and then I'll be touring for that starting in October, uh, which will be my first tour back on the road. And I can't wait. I'm just freaking dying. <laughs> uh been sitting home for a year and a half and but uh i also have a gig with uh, metal allegiance at the end of september that'll actually be my the first one back but that's just a right. one-off me and uh alex skolnick and um john bush mark asagata wow uh, Phil demo you guys should go to that that's a fun show to see yeah, it's oh, always yeah. i've seen them a shows. bunch of times they're awesome shows Love where's, alex mike Skolnick. where's that show it's on long island uh, oh, a place called stereo garden so it's just a one-off on the island uh, and that'll Road be my first time King. playing. Yeah, come on down. It's it's going to be fun. And what else? I'm in the middle of uh, working on a new Winery Dogs album. We just started that a few weeks ago out in L.A. So uh, yes. I'm home for a little break, and then I'm going to head back out to L.A. in a few weeks, and we're going to continue work on that. And that's pretty much it for now. I'm just patiently waiting to get back on the road. It's been It's been a weird, long year and a half, but it's enabled me to hang with you guys and do stuff with it like this. So that's been fun. But, but uh, yeah, as much as I like hanging with you guys, I really got to get back on the road before I lose <laughs> yeah. my fucking mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Mike will be back in a couple of weeks on the monsters. Then once again, where we uh, rank the films of David Lynch. So uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah. And I was, you know what? I was going to say something to you, Mike, after this is over, but now that you said, it, I see the eraser head behind you there. Yeah. I'm a huge David Lynch fan. He's my favorite filmmaker of all time. So yeah, awesome. he, he's my number two, but yeah. uh, you know, he's, uh, I'm actually set up, set up in my theater right now from doing the De Palma show a few nights ago. Uh, so I'll just leave nice. this year and <laughs> do the, the late <laughs> that was David a good Lynch show. Work. That was a really interesting show. Yeah, it's, I mean, I love talking yeah. about film too. So yeah, film okay. and music are my, my two passions. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me for that as well. Awesome. Got it. Mike, I just have to say your, your uh, drum solo, Between the Buried and Me, uh, killer. I saw it on YouTube and they have the little drum parts like yeah, they have yeah. it all laid out. Thank you. Out outstanding. Really yeah, good. Yeah, that was fun. Those guys are. Totally yeah, they're insane. all really good. They're all really yeah. sick drummers. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And that new Neil Morse track is really good. Thank you. Well, it's That's a double album. Really I should mention it's a double album. And the first album is all kind of shorter, popular tunes. The, the singles we've released so far, are the more shorter tunes. But then the second disc 
is just two epics, a 20 minute epic and a 30 minute epic. Nice. And it's full on Prague. So, you know, you get a little bit of both. Oh, awesome. the, but that's why it's Innocence and Danger. Like the first disc is Innocence, second disc is Danger. Hmm. And the tour is going to be the same. We'll do two sets. First set will be the shorter, shorter by our standards, you know, 10, 12, 15 minute songs. And then the second set will be all the 30 minute epics. But yeah, wow. thank you. Nice. You're coming out this way, you coming to California with that tour? Uh, no California date, but we're, uh, we do have, what is it? I, I don't remember. Ah. Offhand, we got Philly, we got Jersey, we got, um, I can't remember offhand, Chicago, uh, Seattle, uh, Seattle. Nashville, but that's all I, no LA show for some reason though, but, but hopefully I'll be out there soon enough with yeah, something, yeah, yeah. with one of my 47 <laughs> bands. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I see Hudson Valley Square's road trip to Long Island. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean th those Metal Elysian shows are a blast. I mean, it's, just, awesome. it's a whole bunch of us metal dudes all grew up listening to Priest and Maiden and Sabbath and oh, yeah. this, and we just get together and throw down and have a blast. It's fun. Cool. Yeah, I, I saw you guys at the chant. I think you were there. Or the, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say. Once I saw you at the chant, was like a, was like a Monday night, and it was like snowing outside. And Chuck Billy was there. Mark was there. I think you yeah. were playing drums that night. Mom yeah, was yeah. Was there, I think too. Yep, I remember. Yeah, your son was opening. Yeah, right on. My son's doing great too. His band Tala. I mean, it's. I don't know if it's you know right for the Sea of Tranquility audience. They're more of a new metal hardcore thing, but they're. Uh, they just got the Avatar tour, and they're going to be out all September and October with Avatar. Nice. So yeah. awesome. Andrew, yeah. Andrew, yes. and that band, and the the bass player. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, was playing in this band called uh, Saravo. I'm pretty sure that. Yeah. Was I saw a bunch of times because they're a Philly band and I'm I've hung out with them a bunch. He's awesome. Yeah, he's 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 crazy on stage too. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, the whole well, my son's whole band is absolutely yeah. insane. Literally, the first night of their last tour, the singer got arrested on the first night of the tour. Oh. I mean, just and he, he they got banned from the Viper Room because the singer got naked on stage and started running through the audience <laughs> naked. It's like a freaking Gigi Allen, you know. That's so, like, great. Yeah. That's great. Too funny. Scary. Jim, how about you? You got some stuff in the works too, right? I'm just working on new stuff. Uh, if anybody likes the traditional metal, you know, go look for the latest Hitman album, Destroy All Humans. Uh, it was on a lot of top 20 lists last year and it was pretty well received. So if you guys like that, yeah, you go where it made it. So that's, uh, that's all. That's all. And I'm working on new stuff. So that's all I got going on. Cool. Martin, how about on your end? Well, I, I guess I'll just say that martinpopoff.com for any books. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at these albums all around me and I think I've written books on 15, <laughs> if not 20 of these bands and probably a nice. total of about 30 to 40 books on these bands. Wow. Of things. So if you like these bands, there might be a book there on one of these bands, Martin Popoff. Wow. And Lizzie. That's awesome. That's right. That's right. Very cool. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, this trip down to 1977. I want to thank Mike Portnoy, Jim Bocci, and Martin Popoff for coming and joining the fun tonight. Uh, we look forward to seeing them back once again. And uh, as always, thanks to the regular crew, Lynn Versace, Butch Jones, Nick Franco, Sidney Taylor, Ryan Scout, Steve Keeler, and Chris Allo. I am Pete Pardo. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here oh, on YouTube. Man. All the, the damn time. All the damn time. That's right. Take care for the whole crew. I am Pete Parter once again. We'll see you next week here at the Hudson Valley Squares. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.